Last August, the world saw pictures from Kabul airport of hundreds of people trying to flee. You know, people running alongside planes. Some people died because they, they hid in the, tried to travel in the plane undercarriage. People handing their babies over walls. What did you feel whenever you saw your own people having that terrified reaction to the fact that, that the Taliban was going to take control? Uh, from my point of view, it was not so much uh, of uh, them being terrified of the Taliban, whatever that, that is. I don't know what a Taliban is. Uh, but it wasn't the fact that they were terrified of us. It was more the United States uh, and the Hollywood image it has built up for itself. You can park that uh, airplane in India. You can park it in Iran. You can park it in Uzbekistan, in Tajikistan, and make an announcement to the people that anyone who makes it to the airport will be getting a free ride to the United States or European countries. We've only had a, a few thousand people rush to the airport. And uh, the, the way they did it was very sad, uh, just as you explained. Uh, but if you park that in any of these uh, supposed uh, third world countries, you will have millions of people flocking to the airport trying to get out. And it's not because of another government coming to power. It's more of the economic situation. It's more economic migration. Uh, so that is our point of view, and that's what we've been saying. That uh, Afghanistan needs to have the opportunity to develop, it needs to have the opportunity given by the international community for it to not be sanctioned and have access to international markets and banks. So it can provide to its people and the people, the Afghan people feel safe that they have opportunity to live in their country and contribute. But, but we, saw, we saw with those images of the people at the airport, we saw men with guns in, in trucks, um, driving through Kabul, driving through the city, driving through the countryside, um, and it, it appeared very much that people were absolutely petrified of them, of the violence they could inflict of them. It wasn't, I don't think, from, from what I saw, that they were choosing to live for a better life. I think it looked like they were fleeing for their lives because they were so terrified and they were desperate. Well, again, the art of deception practiced by, uh, by the Western media is, I think, to blame for what the perception that you have received. If it was fear of guns, I think the United States had more guns and more gunpowder than we could ever have had. If it was about trucks, the United States had more APCs, armored personnel uh, carriers, and other type of trucks, which were several times more terrifying than the simple trucks that, that were used by the indigenous fighters, the freedom fighters of Afghanistan. So again, it's not a uh, petrification of the Taliban. It is more an economic migration. An opportunity presented itself to the poor people who naturally, because of the Hollywood image built up by the United States about the pastures being greener on the other side is what drove the people to the airport. But that image of someone passing their child over the wall to a soldier, you don't give away your child because you, you think they'll have a better life in America. You are really desperate. I mean, I don't know if you have children. I have children. I would have to think I am, give, I am putting them over this wall because they will have a better life, a, a chance to survive. I mean, that, 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 is, that action, I think, is, is pretty clear. You know, this just validates my point even further. The person, however dishonorable uh, and degrading the act was of giving a child to a foreign soldier, an occupier, uh, however degrading that was, but it's an indication and it validates my point that it is for, as you pointed or as you rightly said, better opportunities. It was not because his life was threatened by the Taliban that were coming it's not that, that the Taliban were going to kill his child. It just validates my point even further that it was for economic reasons. But maybe they thought that the Taliban, maybe he thought the Taliban might kill him. You know, 
I kill read, the father? M- maybe, maybe they thought that their lives were in danger. And so they, they would give the child away? Well, I read recently that a family in, I think, northwestern Afghanistan, the mother and father had died, and they had eight children, and all eight children starved to death. So maybe, maybe they didn't think that they would be killed. Maybe they just felt that the economic circumstance, they could not provide for their children, and their children would die in that really awful case. I've never heard uh, any credible media report any such case. Neither has it been reported by UNAMA or UNICEF or all the other international NGOs and organizations that are here in Afghanistan. No one has starved to death in Afghanistan so far. So you don't, you don't think malnutrition is at that stage yet? I, I agree that there is malnutrition. It's because of the sanctions imposed on us. It is, it is not because, again, it is because people see better opportunities economically outside Afghanistan because we are facing sanctions by the international community and the people are being punished for what they had no hand in. It is a collective punishment of the people of Afghanistan for the simple fact that they want to be free and liberated and not have, uh, not have the, uh, them being colonized by, by foreigners.